Now on Coach TV News. Bomb threats across Delmarva, what police said just moments ago. Victims of the Key Bridge collapse remembered what advocates want to see happen as they mourn. How safe is the Bay Bridge? Startling statistics from authorities tonight. A chilly night on the way to the coast. I'll let you know just how much longer this cooler weather will last. Coming up in just a few moments. This is Coast TV News at 11. Good evening. I'm Madeline Overturf. Welcome to Coast TV News at 11. We begin tonight with scary calls that closed down tons of shopping centers on Delmarva. A series of bomb threats against Planet Fitness is what caused concern Saturday night. Police say they were directed at Milford and West Ocean City Planet Fitnesses at least, and many more. It did cause evacuations of those facilities and surrounding businesses. Police in both Delaware and Maryland say the threat was deemed unsubstantiated and no one is in danger. Take a look at this. Do you know this man you'll see walking in your screen? Worcester County sheriffs say they believe he was trying to break into cars in West Ocean City. They need your help finding him. New tonight, crews say they've removed a huge chunk of bridge debris at the Key Bridge wreckage site. It weighs 156 tons. The Unified Command says it's a massive step towards reopening the navigational channel to the Port of Baltimore. They say 10 boats have gone through the alternative channels so far this weekend. Community members in Baltimore came out for a vigil in honor of the victims of the Key Bridge collapse. The victims were construction workers who were on the bridge filling potholes during the collapse. Roberto Marquez is the event organizer, and he says a construction of the memorial for the victims is important. I want the community to know that, that we as brothers, uh, we are here and do our best. Uh, you know, the construction of the memorial is important, but also the presence. And uh, I guess, uh, you know, uh, as far as our resources, this is what we can do to this point. The Baltimore Community Foundation has established the Maryland Tough Baltimore Strong Key Bridge Fund that will allow for donations towards recovery efforts. The tragic and stunning collapse of Baltimore's Key Bridge immediately raised the question, are there other major bridges susceptible to the same kind of disaster? As Pete Muntean reports, the answer is yes and close to home. Just 20 miles away from the disastrous ship collision that took down Baltimore's Key Bridge, there are new fears that another iconic Maryland bridge may be vulnerable to the same fate. Parts of it stretching more than 300 feet up and four miles long between Annapolis and Kent Island is the Chesapeake Bay Bridge. Multiple experts underscore to CNN that many of the hulking twin span suspension bridges, concrete pilings, and aging piers are too exposed to possible collision. That's the, the symbol of the Chesapeake Bay. Captain Frank Carver showed me the Bay Bridge at close range, its oldest span now 72 years old. The urgent warning from experts is especially pertinent since this bridge is on the very shipping lane that was being used by the MV Dolly. State figures show that each year, 27 million vehicles drive across the Bay Bridge as 11 million tons of cargo sail under it. Sometimes we do at least four times a day, if not sometimes 10 times a day, you know, fishing all around it at the Bay Bridge now. Right now we're in the center of the shipping lane that leads to the Port of Baltimore and a CNN analysis found that some of the pilings of this bridge are just as vulnerable to the type of collision that took down the Key Bridge. Engineering professor Adel El Safti of the University of North Florida says the design could be at risk of collapse if hit by a container ship. If once a port goes down, then the whole superstructure will go down as well and it will pull the other parts as well. It's gonna have that kind of uh, catastrophic failure. The tower piers that support the main spans of the Bay Bridge have protective fenders, but El Safti points out that is where protections end. There are none of the barriers known as dolphins used to blunt the force of an errant ship. I think that is what we really need to do is to design and protect, design better and protect our infrastructure. 
The Chesapeake Bay Bridge is operated and maintained by the same agency that oversees the Key Bridge. In a new statement to CNN, the Maryland Transportation Authority says after the Key Bridge collapse, it is, quote, looking at options with the U.S. Coast Guard on the feasibility of increased peer protections for the Bay Bridge and what's possible in the navigation channel. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg said no bridge is designed for a direct hit from a ship. This is a, a unique circumstance. Uh, I do not know of a bridge that has been constructed to withstand a direct impact from a vessel of this size. I think everybody will definitely be on more on guard now, that's for sure. Captain Frank Carver calls the collapse of the Key Bridge a gut punch. Throwing a whole new light, something you just didn't realize could ever happen, all that, and it happened. Now you can see it just opens up so many more vulnerabilities all around. That was Pete Muntean reporting. Now we have in-depth coverage of the Key Bridge collapse on our website right now. That's coasttv.com. Let's take a live look right now outside into Dover. Our first alert meteorologist Alex Seymour joins us now. Good evening, Alex. Good evening. We've got a pretty chilly evening here along the coast. We're going to take a live look outside on our Boardwalk Plaza Hotel camera in Rehoboth Beach. Skies have pretty much cleared up this evening. Temps, though, down about 49 degrees. Winds, not as light as what it shows there. Those winds northwest 3 miles per hour in Rehoboth Beach. The weather station is right on the dune, so you're just having the buildings blocking some of that wind right there on the boardwalk. It is a little bit gustier still out there this evening. Temperatures all across the region in the upper 40s. We're going to be falling down into the 30s by the time we head towards the morning hours. The winds have certainly lightened up from what they were earlier, but still we're seeing some gusts upwards of 8 to 9 miles an hour this evening. Those winds going to continue to lighten up throughout the overnight hours. A lot of clouds still out there. Those should clear up by the time we head towards sunrise tomorrow morning. And as those clouds clear up, our temps will really be allowed to tumble. Right now, though, mainly cl cloudy skies continue. But tomorrow, a bit more sunshine. Our UV index forecast brought to you, well, sponsored by Ocean City. A UV index of 6 tomorrow, so that is a high UV index, so it only takes about 30 minutes to burn. So if you do plan on spending any extended time outside, probably a good idea. Have sunglasses, have some sunscreen on tomorrow. Temperatures going to be climbing up into the mid-50s under those partly to mostly sunny skies up and down our coastline. Alex, thank you very much. Well, if you are in the Worcester County area and you hear some loud noises or something, don't worry. It's not actually alarming. Sheriffs say the National Guard is just conducting a military exercise at this place you see right here on your screen along Snow Hill Road. Nearly 1,000 runners were in Salisbury today for the 6th Salisbury Marathon. The course went along Riverside Drive near Salisbury University, the City Park, and downtown. It began at 7 a.m. with the marathon, which did you know was a qualifier for the Boston Marathon? It was hard. I, mean, I was barely moving by the end. Um, it was an awesome event and, and something I'm really, really proud to be a part of. And it, it definitely got hard by the end, but just pushed through, you know. Also included were a half marathon and a 5K. The city of Rehoboth Beach says its famous water tower will be power washed. That starts Monday. What does it mean for you? Well, several parking spots in the lot will be closed off, as will the Steve Elkins Way. That's the connection between the Convention Center and Baltimore Avenue. We have a lot more news to get to this evening, like benefiting Lewis and Bloom, when you can go out for a great cause. Well, the 70s return to Delmarva this week. I'll tell you when, coming up in just a few minutes. But first, some incredible features to hard news exclusives. We take a look at some of the biggest stories you may have missed. We're back in just 60 seconds. I'm a public school teacher. I know lots of people said, I can do that. Uh, come and try it for a day. A lot of our challenges are funding. Teachers often go in their own pocket to make sure students have backpacks, pencils, David Troll. That's pushed for more public school funding and public school teachers. And it's so great to have someone at the national level that's going to be on our side. David Trone's always supported teachers. Now Maryland teachers have overwhelmingly endorsed David. David would definitely get an A+. I'm David Trone, and I approve this message. Here for this nonsense? Let's just stop and rest. Oh, wait, look, there's Hank. Hey, hey Hank. Hank. I wish I had a Hank like that. Girl, I wish I had a house like that. <laughs> <laughs> I heard he has a screened-in back porch. Nah, I heard he has a courtyard. 
You know he has a dog washing station in his house? We should definitely invite ourselves over. Right? We do need a spa day. Yes, spa day. Yeah, I say Manny Petty. Look at my nails. I've been digging in flower beds all day. From referendum round two to a soapy financial solution, there was a lot going on this week along the coast. Charlie Sakaitis has a look at our week in review. Monday, Milton Town Council unanimously gave the green light to plans for phase one of the Granary Housing Development, which will build around 1,200 new homes over the next 20 to 25 years off of Sand Hill Road. Tuesday, in a Coast TV exclusive, we've reported that a new Margaritaville Hotel and Resort in Ocean City is not happening. The attorney for the developer of the planned resort saying that the sheer size of the proposal is just too big. Instead, a smaller hotel is now being planned, but that means that they will lose out on the Margaritaville branding. Wednesday, we had a tornado warning on Delmarva. Hold up. We now have a new, we have a tornado warning that just issued a few moments ago. Coast TV Chief Meteorologist Paul Williams followed the storm live on air and on radio online as well until the danger had passed through the area. Thursday, we featured an Ocean City business owner who turns bacon grease into soap bars. Sunrise owner Sam DeLauder got the idea thanks to his grandparents who used this recipe to save money during the Great Depression. He says it's been saving him big time. And Friday, We've done a lot of reporting on the failed Cape Henlopen School District referendum, which happened back on March 26th. Well, now school officials have scheduled a new meeting for next week with a possible vote on a May referendum on the agenda. We don't know just yet what would be in the new school package, but we are keeping an eye on it. With your Week in Review, I'm Charlie Sakaitis. The Eclipse hype grows, a very special way to celebrate it here in our region. Coming up on Coast TV News. Well, much warmer weather on the way to the coast over the upcoming week. I'll let you know just how warm it will get and have your eclipse forecast coming up just after the break. Where your business chooses to bank matters. Founded locally, County Bank is invested in serving you, your business, and our community. We offer customized loans to fit any business with competitive rates and flexible terms. Ask us about County Bank Express Loans. Choose County Bank. We have roots here. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender, NMLS RID 410450. Hey Delmarva, what does interior design at that furniture store look like? It's never the same. Every home that I go into, every person that I meet, it's always different. You uh, go in the store and pick that one piece that you're not gonna go into someone else's home and find the exact same thing. Something that's gonna bring some life into it. The conversation piece that says, you wanna sit down and have a glass of wine? <laughs> we get new pieces in every day. You can have same week delivery or same day pickup. We're just three miles south of Del Mar. But when I decided to have my kitchen done, I knew I wanted it done professionally. And that's when I contacted Ellen. She took me to the Delmarva Design Center. From the moment I bring a customer into Delmarva Design Center, the ideas start to flow. First thing we do is take a stroll around the showroom so we can look at all the different vignettes to get ideas of what they like and see what they react to. For each of the different aspects that I wanted to change in my kitchen, there were experts here and everyone was so helpful. They listened to what I had to say and they had great ideas that helped me put together exactly what I wanted for my kitchen. My goal is to have the customer enjoy their space as quickly as possible and Del Marva Design Center helps me do that. My kitchen is one of my favorite places now. It's something that I use every single day of my life. I'm elated with my experience at the Del Marva Design Center. Del Marva Design Center. Great design starts with great inspiration. Selbyville, Delaware. Cooler weather will be continuing over the next 24 to 36 hours before some much warmer weather takes over during the upcoming week. Right now, we're still in that cool weather, still in that chilly weather. We're actually going to be falling down into the 30s overnight tonight. Right now, though, still holding in the 40s as we take a live look out on our Gateway Subaru camera at the Commander Hotel. Temps sitting right around 49 degrees. Winds coming out of the northwest, 6 miles per hour. Those winds going to continue to get calmer throughout the overnight hours. And, but still, with those calmer winds, it's going to get pretty chilly. 
you're going to want to bundle up as you head out first thing Sunday morning. But later on this week, not going to need a bundle up. You can probably break out those shorts as the 70s are going to be returning this week. Coastal flooding also going to be returning. That's starting tomorrow, Sunday and Monday, because we're going to see winds really start to pick up out of the southeast. That's going to push water towards the coastline. It's going to warm us up a bit, but push water towards our coastline. So minor coastal flooding is expected Sunday and Monday for multiple high tide cycles. Then also we have that solar eclipse this week. Total solar eclipse not quite here, but partial solar eclipse 85 to 90 percent of the sun eclipse. That is just two days away. Monday afternoon, the peak is right around 320 in the afternoon. Mostly sunny skies are expected, expected so we should have some pretty good viewing conditions. Temperatures across the region this evening in the 40s. So cool now. Not so much in about 48 hours from now. Winds out of the northwest, pretty light, only gusting 5 to 10 miles per hour. Satellite radar picture, a lot of clouds out there still. They're going to fall apart by the time we head towards sunrise tomorrow morning. Sky should be completely clear as this area of low pressure that is sitting and spinning off the northeast coast starts to pull away from the region. What's going to allow that to happen is our skies. It's going to allow our skies to clear by the time we head towards Sunday morning. Temps falling into the 30s and 40s. A few more extra clouds Sunday afternoon, mostly high thin clouds. So partly the mostly sunny skies is what we're going to go with Sunday afternoon with those temps climbing up into the mid 50s. Light winds though tom tomorrow afternoon, so it's going to feel much better than what it felt like today. Down in the mid 30s again as we head towards Monday morning. So you certainly want to bundle up as you're heading out the door Monday morning. Monday afternoon, looking pretty good. Temps in the 60s inland. A little bit of that orange shore wind's going to keep the beaches a bit cooler in the 50s. These 40s, you can probably ignore them. We're going to at least reach the 50s at the beaches under those partly to mostly sunny skies. Our in-house you guys showing in a lot more clouds than what we're actually going to have. It's going to be mostly sunny out there Monday afternoon with those temps quite warm. Great conditions for viewing that eclipse. 5 o'clock when the eclipse is coming to an end. Mainly clear skies continue. And then as we head towards Tuesday, it's going to get quite warm. We're talking about temps climbing up into the upper 60s by late morning. And then we're going to be heading into the 70s. So with the warmth this week, we're also seeing that elevated UV index starting to climb as we head throughout the next few days. So our UV index forecast sponsored by Ocean City, Maryland, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, UV index of six. So that is a high UV index. So make sure you're breaking out that sunscreen if you're spending any appreciable time outside this week. Our Paul Davis restoration and home remodeling seven day forecast. Cooler weather expected on Sunday, mid 60s by Monday afternoon with solar cups. Great weather for that. Be sure to get outside and enjoy it. Then take a look at that. We're in the 70s Tuesday through Friday. That looks great, Alex. Thank you. Millions will pause to look up Monday afternoon as that total solar eclipse arcs across the United States. As NBC's Alice Barr shows us tonight, the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum is using the moment of shared excitement as a chance to bring Americans together through astronomy. From Texas Hill Country, so I've been waiting for this for years, to Niagara Falls, millions of people across the country are about to experience a shared celestial show. It's very exciting. It's a very beautiful event. At the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum, the total solar eclipse means Super Bowl level preps. Super Bowl, World Series, Stanley Cup kind of mixed into one. And the chance to use the hype as a hook. What is the opportunity to reach people and get them engaged in science and in the cosmos that this presents? Astronomy is sort of famous as being what they call a gateway science. To astronomy educator Marielle O'Brien, it's about recognizing our place in the great wide universe and across the ages. There's a sense that this is something outside of Earth that sort of unites everyone. It also connects us to ancient cultures, thinking about um, the times before it was understood why eclipses happened, how cultures dealt with this. So why do eclipses happen? The Earth, the Moon, and the Sun all line up together. In a cosmic coincidence, the Moon will block the Sun, leaving only a shining corona in the path of totality that this time cuts across a wide swath of the United States. You would see it get much darker. You would most likely see uh, stars in the daylight, mm -hmm. so things we're just not used to. It would get colder. Millions more Americans will see a partial eclipse, including here in Washington, D.C., where the museum is hosting a festival on the National Mall, complete with safe viewing eclipse glasses, essential to protect your eyes when a busy nation pauses to look up.
that it's really a wonderful thing to share with other people. And perhaps look around at our neighbors on this cosmic ride. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News. And hey, if you want to watch the eclipse safely, head to coasttv.com right now or our Facebook page because, yep, you know, you love meteorologist Alex Seymour shows us how to make our own viewers from your pantry. Great story there. Mark this on your viewing calendar on Monday, April 8th. We have live coverage with NBC News of the eclipse beginning at 2 p.m. Lester Holt will anchor the two-hour special Total Eclipse 2024. It will feature over a dozen reporters from all over the U.S. Again, that is Total Eclipse 2024. Our live coverage on Monday starts at 2. After the break here on Coast TV News at 11, a check on what voters think about the Cape Penlopen School District's second shot at a referendum. And Caitlin Clark, a closer look at the player redefining women's basketball. That's up next on Coast TV News at 11. We are Active Pest Solutions, Delmarva's pest control experts. As temperatures rise, so does pest activity. If you don't protect your home, you're at risk of a pest infestation. Get 365-day protection from common household pests with our proactive pest plan. With termites, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. For one of the fastest response times in the industry, call 302-645-1502 for a free evaluation. Active Pest Solutions, Delmarva's pest control experts. Choice Hotels is a family of brands that helps you get the most for your money so you can be any traveler you want to be. You could be a free hot breakfast hero in a comfort hotel. Yes! That's how you waffle! Mr. This Script got a plot twist at a Radisson Hotel. A business big leaguer. Go for key. Even the ultimate pool float inflator. With 22 brands and the best value for your money, Choice Hotels has a stay for any you. Stay twice and get a free night when you book direct at choicehotels.com. Gotta get the corners. From the time that I established Garlic Builders, I instilled certain core values into my company, like I learned in the military. The number one approach that I instill in my team is a client-first mentality. The relationship with the client goes far beyond the construction process. Years down the road, I want to be able to grab a cup of coffee or grab dinner and reconnect. For so many, this has been a dream of theirs to own a beach house, and it brings great joy to us to be able to be that bridge be able to make their dream finally come true. We're a family of builders, growlic builders, homes built with honor. Take your career to the next level with a company that truly cares about their employees. Family owned and operated for over 50 years, Brazier's Pest Control is looking to add full-time service technicians and clerical staff to join their team. Why Brazier's? Competitive pay, weekends and nights off, no holidays and full benefits package. Plus, each technician gets their own fully equipped vehicle. Brazier's Pest Control is committed to providing a healthy work environment, ongoing training, and quality service. If you have what it takes to join Brazier's team, call and set up your interview today. Path Progress in Bethany plans to build a bike and pedestrian pathway in town continues this week. According to the town, day work on the path will be done Monday and Tuesday on Wellington Parkway. College basketball superstar Caitlin Clark is one step closer to adding championship to her long list of accomplishments. Jesse Kirsch spoke to the superstar ahead of her last college game. Lining it up, misses again, and it springs Connecticut. Clark 0 for 6 from three-point range. Friday night started rough for Iowa superstar Caitlin Clark, but in the second half, three, you bet. The game turned into a nail-biter. And that will do it! Iowa survives Connecticut! The Hawkeyes eked out a two-point win over UConn, advancing to the NCAA championship. What would a national title mean to you? I think that would be the cherry on top, to be able to win a national title for this university. It'll be um, super special, not only for myself, but my teammates. It won't be easy. Undefeated South Carolina will play for the national championship. Iowa faces the South Carolina Gamecocks, who boast 37 wins and zero losses this season, under the leadership of coaching legend Don Staley. It's a matchup that we got to win. Iowa's a challenge. They're playing their best basketball. It's an epic final matchup in a season that's seen women's college basketball reach record levels of popularity. Who's your favorite player? Caitlin Clark. How come? Because she's the best shooter ever. 
no matter what, tomorrow is Clark's last college game before going pro. But when you see the size of the crowds here in Cleveland, even for practice, there's no question that number 22, win or lose, has already left her mark on the game. Tip-off on the women's basketball final is 3 p.m. on Sunday. As we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, the Cape Henlopen District is looking at a second referendum. The board will vote Thursday if it will hold a May referendum after the rejection. Here are the details in case you forgot. The district was proposing a tax increase, 55 cents per $100. That would go to an indoor pool, a new district office and transportation facility, and safety and security. The district board will vote on that new referendum idea on Thursday, which brings us back to our Coast TV poll. We've been asking you, what would change your vote for the Cape Henlopen referendum? Let's take a look at your screen. So far, a tiny majority says they will change their vote if the money only goes to teachers. But cheaper property purpose purchase and no pool also have a lot of votes there. If you haven't voted yet, you can still do that at coasttv.com or our mobile app. In your health news tonight, experts say alcohol use is increasing among retirees and older adults. One specialist says the percentage of older adults who drink each month is increasing, especially among women. For baby boomers, the number of people who binge drink, develop alcohol use disorder, and die from that, that's also on the rise. Over 8 million bags of liquid laundry detergent packets have been recalled. Look at your screen. Here they are. The packets are tied and gain, and they were recalled due to a risk of serious injury because the zipper can split open. The recall includes certain lot codes of all the things you see on your screen. Pods, Tide Pods, Gain Flings, Ace Pods, and Aerial Pods all were manufactured between September 23 and February of 24. After the break here on Coast TV News, going out for a great cause when you can shop and dine to help these beautiful flowers. Coast TV continues in a moment. At East Coast Campers and More, we believe that having a camper is about enjoying the adventure, time with the family, and your escape to nature. From the buying journey to seamless setup, we've got you covered. Walking you through every step, making sure you're spending the most time enjoying what's out there. If you need us after setting up, our mobile RV medics will come to you providing the highest quality of services and repairs. Come start your adventure in Frankfort, Delaware at East Coast Campers and More. McMullen Septic Service. Inspection, that's our business. Pumping, that's our business. Installation, that's our business. Repair, that's our business. Three generations and 70 years of experience, we do it all. Remember, every two to three years to pump your septic to keep things running smoothly. Serving Southern Kent and Sussex counties. Trust McMullen Septic Service for all your septic needs. Your business is our business. Go Glass. Repair, replace, upgrade, or enhance. Go Glass is your go-to for everything glass, friendly and fast. From our infinity insulated glass windows that we bake right here on Delmarva, the auto glass, and from shower doors to beautiful glass railings, even screen porches and patio doors. Go Glass is your one-stop shop for everything glass, friendly and fast. Online at go-glass.com. We're proud to be Delmarva's number one glass company. Go Glass. If you're 55 and up, T-Mobile has plans built just for you. Like two lines of unlimited for just 30 bucks a line. That's a 45% savings versus Verizon and AT&T. Plus, get one of the latest 5G phones free when you add a line. Experience it all on America's largest and fastest 5G network. So switch to T-Mobile now and get two lines of unlimited for only 30 bucks a line. It's Shop and dine to benefit Lewis in Bloom. This Thursday, participating restaurants and shops will donate a percentage of sales to Lewis and Bloom. That's the group responsible for the tens of thousands of tulips you see in Lewis right now. You'll see a green sign in the window of places offering the deal. Well, we've got some chilly weather that's still sticking around this evening and really over the next 36 hours, we're gonna stay on the cooler side of things. So as you take a live look out on our Tidal Health Nanocoat camera and see for temperatures sitting right around 49 degrees this evening. 
So cooling over the next 36 hours, but then it gets much warmer over the upcoming week. You can get that forecast by calling our Coast TV first. So weather line 443-880-9100. Here's that 10-day forecast. Our Paul Davis restoration and home remodeling 10-day forecast. Beautiful weather for the solar eclipse on Monday. That's Monday afternoon. Mostly sunny skies. Temps in the mid-60s. Then we climb well into the 70s for much of the next 10 days. Alex, thank you. And thanks for joining us here for Coast TV News at 11. For more news and local weather, you can download our app. SNL starts right now. Have a great night.